the Song of Hermes, translated from the Oyata Ki Kitaba. And so the summers got longer, and the sky saw an eerie glow and a tricky hour of uncertainty and of the totally not known. The night became as eternal a row of twilight, ever changing mazemas on a pale starless, dark above. Day and nights were then of no meaning as the sky glowed in harsh protest of eternal forces of greater workings, ever coming down unseen but filled across the ever-growing paranoid consensus of the common mind of a modern world. Ever slothful were the men of Gaia's creation at these times of limited vigor of human capabilities. Like great bells of spectral proportion, ringing across the ether of the bones of social order and all notions of unity, did the mammals of earth cry an inner tremble of ever-growing despair of the forthcoming silence. Due to great and ever-spreading communication machination, did man soon, as a common mind of these irrational emotions of irrelevant anger and pressure, by great protest on artificial constructed spaces of innumerable numbers, the word spread with wild skeptics of thaumatology and expectance of mundane sciences. Then it was known by the sages of the working cosmos that the glittering sky were tricks of forces, light and gravity. Then the followers of Hermes arose and sang of the independent mind and for relative abundance, for restrained were men by their lesser kin, of less grandeur and heritage. Men proclaimed that greatest in mind were man, and greatest of men were the followers of Hermes, the new kings and lords of unrestrained play. They were happy and danced and sang and were in bliss of bestial happiness, but they have uttered the word of self and the lands of earth rewarded them with the lands and fates of all. Known it also became that the primal echoes of all arose to heights of glamorous absurdity. Ghostly clouds of untamed ecstasy played wildly but sweet from flutes of ascended voices, and all thoughts of men were gathering in desperation of final salvation to this tune. By thinking them free and bound by promises of glory for all, did man continue its function to be in the world. With the coming of new eons, the world war in anguish as the cancer of ruinous violation of natural harmony were commenced with joy. Plains were now ashen fields and metal cities, and wild fire and amok winds ravages the land, and men sculpted palaces to the followers and praised them for ascended mankind. Then there came a crescendo of ever joy. For men could by new constructed fire leave earth and continue its fate among the children of Helios. Then the followers took to the sky in great ships, never to return, but lost themselves in the great dark. For the rest of mankind there were only great silence, then rage. For they had not been risen to the heavens, but were left with scorched earth. And as the mammals of earth fell upon each other with bestial frenzy, the lowliest and observed notes of ending played the mysterious calando for the everlasting song of Hermes.